this is Captain Chaudhary. Today I want to speak to you about the critical period in dry docking. Dry docking could be in graving dry docks or it could be in floating dry docks. Now first let us consider what is the critical period in graving dry dock. Well, uh, the ship would normally enter head first and uh, normally the blocks in the dry dock they are laid you know to allow you know the draining of the water that means it will generally have some slope seawards now ship is also asked to come with a trim which is slightly more than the slope in the dry dock so that the stern still touches first now in the dry dock after the uh, gates are closed when the stern touches first that is the time you know with the fall of water level at some point of time the stern is going to touch the block now that is the time the critical period starts and with more and more fall of water you know the trim of the vessel changes the draft reduces the underwater volume reduces and eventually the ship takes up a trim which is same as the slope of the blocks and the ship touches all over ship sits all over now this period from the stern touching the blocks first till the ship sits all over is called critical period why it is called critical period well so many things happen in this critical period now the initial things which i told you there is a change of trim apart from that there is a drop in the water level there is a reduction in underwater volume there is a reduction of a virtual displacement of the ship virtual loss of gm is there so all these things they happen in critical period before the critical period starts the ship is free floating she has her own stability to fight against any uh, healing moments that can be caused on the ship and after she sits all over that means after the critical period is over there are uh, you know the ship number 1 sits all over additional blocks are placed under the ship in various parts so that the ship now has no fear to fall off once any healing moment is caused to the ship so the problem about the stability is only uh, in between so that is called critical period in this critical period there is a continual a growth of uh, up thrust there is a continual a growth of uh, stress that is caused at any single point on the ship there is continual growth of the weight of the ship that will fall on the single block you know and there is continual uh, loss of gm virtual loss of gm that's why this period is called critical period now in this critical period you know as the uh, gm uh, reduces virtually or the displacement reduces virtually can be uh, related to a free floating vessel uh, imagine a free floating vessel from where a weight which is equivalent to the up thrust p is discharge from a point which is at keel and in the stern area so what all things happen what all things happen actually by discharge of the weight will happen virtually with the ship first of all the reduction of draft change of trim which will happen in dry docking which will also happen in discharging of the weight but in addition to uh, these uh, real things as the gm actually reduces by discharge of weight in dry docking the gm reduces virtually this is the critical period in conventional dry docking now what is critical period in the floating dry dock let us look at it now a floating dry dock is actually a u2 suppose the ship has a trim of this kind now the floating dry dock will take up the same trim as the ship and the people on floating dry dock they have expertise they have expertise to uh, rise or uh, get submerged rise or get submerged you know uh, maintaining the trim right and they have capability of acquiring a particular trim that is desired after this uh, uh, situation what happens is the floating dry dock will slip in under the ship and tick the blocks forward and aft uh, simultaneously now what happens is if we look at the floating dry dock from front you know it appears like this there is a large double bottom tank 
these are the side tanks you know and there is a lot of uh, flexibility or a lot of uh, uh, locationing of these tanks so that you can uh, maintain the trim or the, you can acquire a certain trim etc now when the ship sits all over in the floating dry dock you know you can assume that shortly after that the ship as well as floating dry dock can be considered as composite unit so now the stability of individual ship is not questioned nor the stability of the floating dry dock it is the combined stability of the composite unit or the combination now uh, when the ship and dry dock become a composite unit they need to have appropriate stability and stability basically comes from the water plane area because uh, in case of normal box ship vessel also we know that moment of inertia of water plane area is lb cube upon 12 and for a box vessel the vertical distance from b to m is b square upon 12d so what is the breadth of the ship and what is the draft they are very important in deciding what is the stability of the ship so generally if you have for a given draft if you have a, a ship of a broader breadth in your fleet that ship will be generally stiff whereas if the breadth is less the ship uh, uh, might be very tender now here the water plane area at this water line is adequate coming from the side tanks and the ship but when the water plane area falls to this level what happens is you know thereafter the water plane area comes only from the side tanks and the blocks which means the water plane area is not adequate so as the water level drops further till the water level comes to the tank top level you have this problem that there is insufficient water plane area so this is the critical period of a floating dry dock so can we say critical period of the conventional dry dock is uh, after critical period starts after the stern touches first till the ship sits all over and critical period of floating dry dock is when the water level in a combination combination means the ship plus dry dock comes to the keel of the ship till the water level comes to the tank top of the dry dock mm -hmm.